Aloha! Today's tips topic is about developing a statement of your philosophy of teaching. Let's get started. A philosophy of teaching statement, or POT in tips terms, is a document that discusses your core beliefs about teaching and learning in your field. It shows who you are and what you value as a teacher. While it can include your beliefs about teaching and learning in general, we found that a philosophy statement is typically more potent if it focuses specifically on the content that you teach. For example, if you're a second language teacher and your statement completely ignores your beliefs about how people effectively learn languages, your statement might feel too generic to a potential employer. Why is the statement of teaching philosophy the first portfolio item that we cover in tips? Simple. Your philosophy statement really is the heart of your entire portfolio. It should inform and infuse every other element in your portfolio. Your CVs, cover letters, materials and lesson plans, choice of video clips, and more. And it should inform how you answer questions in a job interview as well. It can even help guide your decisions about which jobs you really want to apply for. Referring back to your philosophy helps to ensure that every aspect of your application will be consistent with what you believe and value, and this consistency will be evident to potential employers. For teacher portfolios, it's best if your philosophy statement is somewhat concise. We found that 500 to 1,000 words is usually long enough. Of course, in some graduate school programs, you may take a course that asks you to develop an extensive statement of your philosophy of teaching, drawing from and expanding on knowledge gleaned from several sources. For such a course, your philosophy statement could easily be 15 to 25 pages in length and include a long list of references. However, for your teacher portfolio, your audience is most likely going to be potential employers who probably will not spend the time to read a 15 to 25 page treatise. They'll want to know your core beliefs and how you implement them in a classroom situation. So again, 500 to 1000 words with a few highly relevant references is probably about right. Another important point about a teaching philosophy is that it evolves over time, along with your teaching. As we teach, we reflect on our teaching, we listen to our students, and we add to our base of knowledge about teaching within our field, all of which helps us to revise our teaching practice in subsequent years. Knowing that, it's a good idea to revisit and revise your philosophy statement from time to time throughout your career. Then, how to get started with such an important document? We found that for many people, it helps to brainstorm what you believe and value related to teaching within your field. Here are five possible prompts to help you brainstorm. What's important to you in your teaching? Being a professional in my field means... An excellent teacher in my field is someone who... Talk about a concept, book, or article that's had a major influence on your teaching. We've all had the experience of leaving a classroom with the feeling that the previous class period was totally meaningless. But what is it that makes it truly meaningful for students to learn the content of my field? From among these prompts, choose one that really resonates with you and spend five to 15 minutes writing or recording yourself talking in response to it. As with many brainstorming activities, don't edit yourself. Just generate as many ideas as you can. When you're done, do the same thing with another prompt. For some people, two prompts may be enough to generate lots of ideas, while others may want to continue doing this with more prompts. When you feel that you have plenty of ideas to work with, start reviewing them. Look for connections between some of your ideas and reorganize them based on those connections. You'll probably have several beliefs and values, all of which are important to you, but try to prioritize which ones are the most important. In the end, you'll probably want to focus and expand on three to five beliefs in your philosophy statement. 
Now you're ready to start writing. There is no right or wrong way to write a POT statement. So write it in a way that expresses your ideas and your personal style. Of course, it does need some form of organization so that it's easy for your audience to read and understand, but it should also reflect who you are as a language teacher. As you write, we have two suggestions. First, don't just write about what you believe about teaching. Describe how you make it happen in the classroom. Employers have told us that it is much easier for them to picture an applicant in the classroom if their philosophy statement includes examples of how they implement each of their beliefs. Our second suggestion is to include citations where relevant. So for example, if you're writing about motivation in general, it's probably not necessary to include a citation. However, if you're writing about a specific approach, such as using a specific technique to motivate language learners to engage in discussions, including a relevant citation shows that you're familiar with sources of knowledge and professional growth that are highly relevant in your field. Getting feedback on a draft of your philosophy statement is an essential step. We encourage you to find peers or colleagues whose ideas you value and share your philosophy statement with them. Here are a few potential prompts for your reviewers to follow when they give feedback. Is the statement organized in a way that is easy to follow? Note, there can be many different organizational patterns that can be effective. Can you picture this person in a classroom or other professional context? Do you get a sense of who they are professionally? Are there any places where you feel they should expand? Are there any places where they might be assuming that their reader knows things that the reader actually may not know? For example, are acronyms spelled out in the first instance? Does the author support their ideas in ways that reflect a clear understanding of concepts in their field of study? Are there any places where you feel a citation is warranted? Is there anything else that you want your reviewer to look at? When you get their feedback, keep in mind that a philosophy statement is a very personal document, so you don't have to make every change that's been suggested. Evaluate the feedback you get and apply those suggestions that you feel help make your statement a clear reflection of what you believe. One final note, since TIPS focuses on teacher portfolios, we assume that most participants are pursuing careers in teaching. However, other statements are equally possible, including a philosophy of research, especially pertinent for PhD candidates a philosophy of educational administration, a philosophy of advising, or others. For more information about these, see the Dig Deeper section for this lesson. To summarize, here are the key points about an effective philosophy of teaching statement. It's a concise but thorough description of what you believe and value about being an effective language teacher. It informs all the other elements of your portfolio and helps you to be consistent when you answer questions during job interviews. It includes examples of how you operationalize your beliefs in a classroom setting. And it evolves along with your teaching experience. We hope that this section has given you a clear idea how to develop your own philosophy statement. Now test what you've learned and take the next steps. Take the quiz in the think section to check your understanding of these concepts. Check out the resources in the dig deeper section for even more strategies and tips. Do the tasks in the discuss section. After brainstorming and organizing your core beliefs about teaching, write about one of your beliefs why it is important to your teaching practice, and how you would implement it in a classroom setting, and post it in the forum. Then find one other person's post and give feedback. Suggestion, 
Once you've written a draft of your philosophy statement, share it with someone and get their feedback on how to improve it. You may notice that giving feedback on someone's POT helps you to clarify ideas for your own statement as well. Okay, have fun cultivating your ideas, and thanks for listening.